and I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. The worst book that I read this year, and I'm so scared that you guys are gonna kill me for this because it's such a huge book here in the book community. 2024 has started, which means that I need to tell you guys about the best and the worst books that I read this past year in 2023. As most of you guys know, um, because I've mentioned it repeatedly on my channel, this past year was my worst reading year ever, and that's due to all of my personal circumstances. I think in the end, I read 25 books in 2023, which is like an all time low for me over the past five to six years. But still, we've got some amazing books that I need to talk about with you guys, but also some that I would rather burn than ever have to touch them again. <laughs> I mean, what do we say? Shall I start off on a high note and then tell you guys which books I absolutely despised in 2023? Maybe let's do that. <laughs> I have to say, I believe that I did not give out any five star reads this year, but I feel like my mental capacity is just like not allowing me to fully emerge myself in a book and to like fully enjoy it. I'm having a bit of a difficult time with just sitting down and accepting that just like doing nothing and reading a book, like that's actually beneficial to my mental health and that I am just allowed to sit down and and have a good time with that. But one of the first books that really like made me fall in love with reading again this year was Happy Place by Emily Henry. I made a whole reading vlog for this one as well. Emily Henry is just like my go-to author right now and she's one of my favorite romance authors. I always say that I don't consider myself to be a romance reader, but that's just because I don't love the extremely spicy romances. I don't like the romances with just like toxic main characters or like male characters that are like the love interests. I don't love toxicity and I feel like, but that's maybe one of my assumptions about the romance genre, that a ton of romances are either extremely cheesy, the plot is like completely all over the place and like really unrealistic, and like the male love interests are still dicks. <laughs> And Emily Henry does not do that with her stories and her characters. We follow Harriet and Wynne, and I believe that they have been together for a really long time. Everyone thinks they are the perfect couple, and they are a part of this like really big friend group of, I think, two or three other couples as well. And one of the other couples who they are friends with, their parents, they own a cottage, but this year, like, the cottage is gonna get sold. So it's gonna be the last time as their like huge friend group comes together that they will be like celebrating, chilling at the cottage, but Harriet and Wynn have actually broken up. Things went wrong in their relationship, but they don't want to tell the group. They don't want to ruin the whole mood. So they decide to not tell anyone. And this book focuses on so much more than Harriet and Wynn's romance and like why it went wrong. Will they resolve? Stuff like that. But what I loved that was kind of like the side plot in this book for me is the friendship that Harriet had with her like ex-college besties and the imperfections that you can have in a friendship and to acknowledge it and talk about it and have friction with your friends as well. And it's so much more than just a romance, which ugh, just chef's kiss and Emily Henry's writing style. Um, <laughs> And the romances. Oh, I'm, I'm just, I love it. I love it. Emily Henry is, praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> a book that I personally loved and that my mom talked to me about afterwards as well. She was like, Sabine, you have to read this book. And I was like, mom, I already got you. I read it. I loved it. I thought that that was going to be my favorite book of the year. It might be. And that is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, if I'm correct. This was, I think, voted one of the best books of 2022. And I owned it. I've heard so many great people like talk about it. Alex, who I follow on Instagram, and she also has an amazing YouTube channel. She was raving about this book. I'm trying to like think of a good description of this book, but like our main character, she's a chemist in the 1950s. And you basically, at the start of this book, you follow her during that time period and all the sexism that she has to deal with because she's a woman in a chemistry industry like mind-blowing she cannot possibly be good at her job because she's a female but eventually how she gets her own cooking show and involves a lot of chemistry in it and she became like this household name she became super super famous and like inspired a whole new sort of like feminist wave i guess it's very inspirational it's very sad actually like the story shocked me at points which i did not expect she is like sometimes like how direct she is and just what she says to people. It's just so funny to see how others responded to her like maybe not so common ways of thinking. And it just moved me a lot. I don't want to say too much. So that's why I'm keeping it kind of vague, but it was really, really good in my opinion. And 100% deserved 
like the 2022 best book of the year. So if you haven't read it, please do so. Throwing this book very, very quickly into the mix because it is one of my favorites, but because I just like flew through it within an hour, it just feels like, you know, quick little mention and then we'll move on to the other two books that I still wanna talk about on this list. That is Heartstopper, volume five by Ellis Oseman. Again, Ellis Oseman, one of my favorite authors. Like Radio Silence has made such a huge impact on my life and I think Ellis Oseman can write anything and I will love her work no matter what. I don't think I even have to tell you guys what this is about because it's so popular, but like Nick and Charlie are just this super, super, super cute couple. And at the start of this graphic novel series, it's all about Charlie's crush on Nick, but he doesn't know whether Nick likes guys too. And basically during this whole graphic novel series, their romance evolves. And I think this was a really great addition as to shining a light upon wanting to go that little step further with your partner. And it's very exciting and it's very awkward and it's very scary. And just talking about that with them and your friends and just not making it such a big taboo, which I am a big forced on there? What's that word in English? Which is something that I am a really big supporter of. So five out of five stars, I guess. <laughs> Ugh, these last two books, they really made my reading year, to be honest. Let's start off with the one that really got me out of my reading slump after my breakup this past summer, and that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Oh my God. God, I still cannot believe that I haven't picked up Hellbent, which is the sequel, which I should because first of all, I have my audiobook credit for it and it's gonna like expire if I don't pick it up before February. But I've also heard that like, you need to pick this up really soon after you've read it because Lee Bardugo kind of like jumps into the story again in Hellbent without really giving you a big recap. So now it's like still semi-fresh in my memory. I gotta pick up the sequel. Again, super popular book. Our main character, Alex Stern, she is 20 and she's had her fair share of bad things happen to her. She's had like drug boyfriends, she dropped out of high school, she isn't living with her parents anymore, and the most crazy thing about her is that she was the sole survivor of a homicide, and now she's the main suspect. But she gets invited to Yale, to attend Yale, the top university, and to even be part of one of its most exclusive societies. So she's like offered a second chance at one of the most elite schools in the entire country, and you don't know why, you don't know what's going on, you get to know the whole societies, and it's like magical, it's dark, and this story gets told from two different perspectives. So you have Alex Stern and you have, oh my gosh, why can I not know his name anymore? And that's real bad because I loved his character. Why is my book upside down? Darlington, oh my gosh, why couldn't I come up with his name? Yeah, you also follow the perspective of Darlington, which oh, their dynamics and their chemistry because they kind of like despise each other their banter and chemistry is just amazing. So it's kind of like a murder mystery as well with magical elements, secret societies. And I loved getting to know more about Alex's character and Darlington's character very, very slowly. And the book definitely ended on a cliffhanger. So why haven't I picked up Hellbent yet? Question of the century. And then the last book that I finished in 2023 might be one of my favorites. And that is Abby Jimenez's Part of Your world. I'm scared to say this, and that is that Abby Jimenez might be my new favorite romance author, but I don't want to like throw Emily Henry off the throne because she has just been a stable in my life for the past two years, but I've read two of Abby Jimenez's books and I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. Honestly, her romance like the love interest like the guys they are they they are literally melting my heart right now just thinking about them you have alexis and daniel and alexis is like the city girl she has like such a good job her whole family is part of this like surgeon dynasty there's like a ton of pressure that's being put on her because of that and she is definitely like struggling with it as well and she is currently separating with her partner because he was just very manipulative and really, really bad. And then you have Daniel who lives in this super, super small town of Wakan. They basically just rely on tourism. And when there aren't any tourists, it's just dead over there, okay? Like nothing can be done. It's boring as hell. But Alexis's car breaks down on the road and guess who comes by and helps her out? Daniel. And one thing leads to the other and they decide to have like casual hookups, which is exactly what they're looking for. But are they though? Do they not like each other just a little bit more than for the casual thing? Who knows? What do you think? <laughs> and I'm gonna give you a little spoiler for the first book that I read this year. That's Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. And I think I even preferred that one more than this one, which I did not think was possible. The man in these books are just like so sweet, so kind, so thoughtful. And one thing that I love about her books until so far is that the trope of miscommunication 
is not so heavy on the foreground or maybe she just even like skips over it which is very refreshing because i just hate it when you can predict where a romance novel is going and that everything is gonna like go bad because the characters are not communicating to each other and in her books i feel like they do which is so nice thank you abby Thank you. I've had this book on my shelves for I think almost two years and right now I'm like hitting myself in the head like why didn't you pick this up sooner Sabine? It's a gem. It's amazing. So if you like romances with a lot of depth, super like cute vibes, it's not super super steamy but there is definitely some steamy stuff going on in here. And if that sounds something to you, go read it. Do it now. Don't be like me. Pick it up immediately. Those were actually my favorite reads of 2023. Now let's talk about the ones that I didn't like so much. This one was okay, but I hoped and thought that I would love it. And that is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Look at the stunning edition though. Like Fairy Loot does such an amazing job with their special editions because they're just stunning. This is a YA fantasy based on Korean mythology or like fairy tales where every single year a girl needs to be sacrificed to the sea god in order to keep her village, keep her town from like overflowing flooding. Is that how you call that? Our main character has a brother and his bride-to-be gets chosen and our main character volunteers for her place instead and she gets like sent to the sea world. Why I didn't like this book so much is because for me, it was very unclear of what we were working towards. I was like, okay, so we have arrived at this Sea God's palace, Sea God's place, but what, what's going on with the plot? And I do not like it if I don't know what kind of direction we're going into. Also, I felt very uncertain about the whole mythology stuff in this book. I feel like it could have been explained a little better. I felt a little helpless with this book just in general. Axie O's descriptions were super luscious very beautiful and I believe that she's actually written a YA contemporary as well if I'm not mistaken so I would actually like to pick up something else by her just the way that this book was worked out was not it for me so quite a disappointment and the other two books that I didn't love this year I actually already unhauled so the other book that I already like unhauled is Reputation by Lex Croucher which like again so disappointed that I didn't love it because I am a huge fan of Bridgerton as most of you guys probably are as well and this book looks like and was being marketed as very Bridgerton-esque and just like something that you would like gobble up and enjoy so much. It was boring as hell. It was like 450 pages and it could have been put into 250. I don't even remember our main character's name and I don't even, I don't even care. Was it Georgina? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, Georgiana, almost super, super close. So Georgiana gets basically introduced into the whole seance society and like trying to find a partner and the gossip and everything. But if I have to tell you what it was about, my mind is just blank. I, I cannot give you a description. Nothing of the plot stuck with me. It took too long, like way, way too long. This one isn't it. I do really want to give maybe like Gwen and Art are not in love by the same author a go because I've heard so many great things about it. And I think Lex Croucher is so cool. So I'm so sad that it was not something for me, this book, but I'm just hoping that if I give them another go, their other books will be better for me. <laughs> the last and final one is the absolute worst book that I read this year. This is the only book I think, well, that's not true. I also DNF'd another one, but I didn't feel like that was bad. It just mm, 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 wasn't something for me, which is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. I might give it another go, but it just, no, until so far not. But we're not talking about that one. The worst book that I read this year, and I'm so scared that you guys are gonna kill me for this because it's such a huge book here in the book community, is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I'm so sorry. I just could not with this book. It gave me the ick. I was cringing the whole time. Oh my gosh. It's supposed to be a super cute YA rom-com, and I think it probably is, but it's so cheesy way too cheesy super super ya like i feel like i cannot really critique it for that because it is a young adult book like for me personally better than the movies read like way too young and i just noticed that i was annoyed by it just every single thing that was being 
being written. So many people enjoy this one. I just, I don't get it. And I wanted to so bad, especially because one of my ex-colleagues, she was obsessed with this book as well. In this rom-com about rom-coms, a hopeless romantic teen attempts to secure a happily ever after moment with her forever crush, but finds herself reluctantly drawn to the boy next door. That's all that I even want to say about it because to me, the characters were just really annoying, even our main character, but also the love interests. And just, there were so many pop culture references that it kind of like, it was an overload, which I guess it makes sense because it's a rom-com about rom-com. So of course you're gonna get loads of like when Harry met Sally and Tom Hanks references, which I don't mind because I love Tom Hanks too, <laughs> but it was just too much. And the dialogue and the drama, it was too much. So after like listening to the audiobook for 90 pages, I was like, this book is annoying me so much. I have to quit reading it because otherwise it's gonna like make me not feel good. <laughs> so I would personally not recommend this if you are not into cheesy romances. This one is gonna, it's not gonna be it for you. <laughs> but those were actually the only three worst books that I read, which I still think is not too bad. Some just bored me, except for better than the movies. That one just annoyed the crap out of me. So I mean, these were all just like my opinions. If you have different opinions than I do, that's of course very, very valid. But that was my 2023 best and worst reads of that year. Definitely let me know in the comments what your favorite book was and what was your worst one. I would really love to know. Maybe we can chat about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere on the screen. It really helps me and my channel grow, which I would absolutely love. I hope that the start of the year has been treating you well. And if not, it's only up from here, baby. So it's gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. And just thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye.